Physics, May, June 2016, paper 12. Question 11. A ball of mass M traveling at velocity U collide with a stationary ball of mass M. So you can see this is a, uh, this is a ball of uh, mass M. It's moving with velocity U and it's colliding with this ball of mass M and this is stationary. After collision, the two balls travel at velocities V and V respectively in the direction shown. So this diagram corresponds to before collision and after this M, the object M collide with this one, it moves along this direction. A student write three equations relating to the collision, which row in the table indicates the correct and incorrect inequalities. Observe this diagram. So this mass is moving horizontally and after they had a collision, it's not moving horizontally. As you can see, they, there is an angle uh, for which, uh, from which they are moving. In that case, you have to consider the resolvent of horizontal direction as well as the vertical direction. So let's see the first equation. MU, that is the momentum before collision. This is stationary, so there is no momentum. This one is moving with a velocity U, so mass into velocity. So this is correct. This is the momentum before collision, but after collision, the velocity V is not moving horizontally. So you cannot consider MV plus MV because there is an angle with which they moves. So this is not correct. So this is incorrect. So either your option is B or D. So A and C is not the option. Uh, let me tell you how to resolve. For example, let's consider there is this velocity V moving with an angle 30 degree. The best way to do this is by trigonometry. So form a 90 degree angle. So let's call this as the velocity in the vertical direction. So which is similar to V by here. This one is along the X direction. So let me call it as velocity in the X direction as Vx. So this is my adjacent and my hypotenuse is already known as V. So if I take cos 30, Then adjacent by hypotenuse, so Vx over V, which means my V is equal to V cos 30. Sorry about my writing. Yeah. Similarly, if you take sine, you can say opposite by hypotenuse, so this will become V sine 30. which is similar to this direction. So this is V sine 30. As you can observe, if the angle is along this length, then we get the vector into cos 30. If the side of the length is away from the angle, we get sine, the vector into sine 30. So if I want to resolve it in the horizontal direction, this is along the direction, so the mass, the velocity I'll consider is V cos 30 because it is along the angle. Similarly, I'll get plus this mass M V cos 40. This is going to be my momentum, in the horizontal direction. So as you can see, this is the initial momentum that is mu is equal to mv cos 30 plus mv cos 40. So this is correct. So we already chose this is incorrect. Now that this is correct. So from here, you can observe your answer is here because we have already striked out these options. So out of this, this is incorrect. So you can see this is not the option. So your, your correct answer is D. But what they have done, they have also vertically, they have resolved it vertically. 
So since this is away from 30, this side is m v sine 30, which is right. Uh, that upward moment is equal to the downward moment. So this is also away from 40 degrees. So that is also going to be mass into v sine 40. So it's going to be like this. So this is anyways correct. So the answer for this question is option D. Question 12. A rigid rod XY has an object of weight W fixed at one end. So there is a rigid rod. It has a weight W fixed at this end Y. The rod is in equilibrium. So yes, it's in equilibrium means there is no resultant force as well as there is no resultant moment. Resting on a roller at X and a vertical wall at X. So there is a vertical wall at X, so it's fixed at X and there is a vertical, uh, there is a roller at Z. The roller exerts a force R on the rod as shown. So there is a force R from the rod in the direction shown. The diagram shows the direction, but not magnitude. So what they're trying to say is it's not drawn to scale. It just gives you the idea of the direction in which it's uh, it's acting, the force is acting, um, of the forces R and W. So there is no magnitude. So you cannot rely on the diagram's magnitude. What is the direction of the force on the rod at X? So they have mentioned the force acting at Y the force acting at Z. Now they want us to find the force acting at X. First thing that we have to note, the object is in equilibrium. So we can consider any one of the following. If you have an object in equilibrium, if you have three vectors, all the vectors form a closed triangle. That means, for example, if you have a vector in this direction, then if you have another vector in this direction, then if it is, if the, it doesn't have a result, then it will be a closed triangle on the same order, in the same order. So if you have a closed triangle following the same order, then the object is in equilibrium. If not, the line of action of the vectors should pass through a similar point. So first, let's find the intersection of the line of action of these vectors. That is the weight in this case, the vector is a weight. So let me extend these points and as well as these point. So the intersection is this point. So that's where the line of action of the vector should pass through similar point. So this is the point where all the force of action, the line of force should pass through. So the, the, the force from this, this point X should also pass through the, this direction. So it will be some, it will be in this direction. So you can see that uh, this direction is in D. It's moving this way, this option. So if you want to use the vector diagram, you can just observe, maybe it must, it must have been like this. It must be moving this way. And then, so it's a closed diagram, closed triangle. So the option for this question is D. So you can use any of the following, but what I have done, I first found the similar point of intersection of the two line, line of forces. From that point, I join this line. So that can be moving forward or backward. So to find the closed diagram, I just drew this. So I cannot have this side if, if it is this way. I mean, for example, if the diagram is this way, then there is a resultant. But this is there is no resultant because it is equilibrium. So I just have to get my answer following the same order. And that's why I got this option. D. Question 13. In a large container in an oil refinery, three oils at different densities are mixed. No chemical activity occurs. The mixture consists of the following. 
So you can see no chemical reaction occurs. So there is no increase in mass or decrease in mass. No uh, reactions are there. So they have given the mass of the three oils along with their densities. Now, once they mixed, we want to find what is the density of the mixture. The formula for the density is mass by volume. First, we need to find the total mass. When you mix, what will be the total mass? And also you need to find the total volume. So if I need to find the volume for individual uh, oils, I know from here making the as my subject, it is density over mass. Oh, sorry, it will be mass over density. So take your value of density divided by mass, you'll get the following. This is the volume for the first oil. This is for the second oil. That's, this is for the third oil. Then sum it up. The total volume is going to be 7.23 meter cube. So when you add them, you'll get 7.23 meter cube. Now we have to add the total mass that is 1200 plus 1500 plus 4000. So mass by volume, the total mass, you just sum, of, sum them, divided by the total volume, we got 926.6 kg per meter cube. When you round this off, you'll get 927 kg per meter cube. Therefore, the answer for this question is option A. Question 14. Two coplanar forces acts on the rim of a wheel. The forces are equal in magnitude. Which arrangement of forces provides only a couple? So from this diagram, we need to find which one provides the forces from a couple. So basically, what is a couple? If you have couple, you will have, you will have two equal forces acting opposite to each other and they will be parallel, faced a distance between them. So that is couple. So when you can observe the force in the question, uh, option A, they both are not acting parallel to each other in opposite direction. So that's not the answer. Option B, equal magnitude as they have mentioned, but they are acting on the same direction, not opposite to each other. So this is completely wrong. In option C, you can see the two forces are acting perpendicular to each other. So that's not the definition of couple. The option D, you can see the two forces of same magnitude are acting parallelly opposite to each other. So this is an example of the couple. So the answer for this question is option D. Question 15. The density of air on the earth decreases almost linearly with height from 1.22 kg per meter cube at sea level to 0.74 kg per meter cube at an altitude of 5000 meter. So observe this diagram. Let's consider this point to be the sea level. So at sea level, the density of the air is considered to be 1.22 kg per meter cube. And when it reaches 5,000 meter, that is this point, it's going to be 0.74 kg per meter cube. It is observed that the density of air varies linearly. So there is a proportionality between the density of air and the altitude from the sea level. Atmospheric pressure at Earth's surface on a particular day is 100,000 Pascal. The value of G between Earth's surface and altitude of 5,000 meter can be considered to have a constant value, 9.7 meter per second square. So they have given the atmospheric pressure on a particular day. Also, they have told that the value of G that we have to consider is 9.7 meter per second square. What will be the atmospheric pressure at an altitude of 5,000 meter? First, we need to know what is atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure means the pressure caused by the weight of the air above a given level. So if you consider the sea level, 
the, the pressure caused by the weight of the air above the level, sea level, is going to be the atmospheric pressure. Now, if I need to find the atmospheric pressure at an altitude 5,000 meter, if I consider this point to be 5,000 meter, I need to find the pressure, that means the weight of the air above this point. So to do so, first what I need to do, at a pressure at 5,000 meter, what I can do is I consider the pressure at sea level. That means from here, the entire weight of the air, I consider the entire sea level. Then I'm going to subtract pressure between sea level and 5,000 meter. Then from this 5,000 meter level, I'm going to subtract the pressure at this level. Then I will get the value of the pressure above 5,000 meter. So I know that there is air in between so that I can use the pressure of the fluid formula, which is pressure is equal to rho gh. Since I do not have a constant density value, and since it is varying linearly, in place of density, I will take the average value. That is, I have got 1.22 and 0.742 values are given. So divide by 2 to get the average density. G is given as 9.7. Height is from the sea level 5,000 meters. So the pressure above the sea level and 5,000 meter is 47,530 Pascal. So I'm talking about the pressure in this region is 47,530 Pascal. But I already know the entire atmospheric pressure is 100,000. So when you subtract, you will get this level, the pressure above the 5,000 meter point. Sorry about this, this will be 5,000. So subtract 100,000, that is the sea level, by 47,530, I'll get 52,470 Pascal, which is very close to, when you round it off, you'll get 52,000 Pascal. As a result, the answer for this question is option C. Question 16. A parachute is falling at constant terminal velocity. Which statement is not correct? Observe this question. It's falling at terminal velocity. That means it's a constant velocity. So the parachute is moving with constant velocity, but the height is decreasing. So there is going to be a loss in potential energy, but your kinetic energy of the parachute is going to remain same. Why? Because it's moving with a constant velocity. So if an object is falling at a constant or terminal velocity, there is, not, there is no gain in kinetic energy of the object. So you will see that they're asking us to find which statement is not correct. So option A says gravitational potential energy is converted to kinetic energy of the air. That is possible because when something is falling, air is also having a velocity which is opposing. There is an air resistance. So this is possible. Gravitational potential energy is converted to kinetic energy of the parachute. There is no gain in kinetic energy because the object is moving with constant velocity. If there is an acceleration, deceleration, then there will be a change in kinetic energy. But if it is moving with constant velocity, throughout the kinetic energy is going to remain constant. So the potential energy that is decreased in potential energy must have increases some, some other form of energy, but not the kinetic energy of the parachute. So this is the statement that is not correct. Therefore, the option for this question is B. If you like this video, please like my channel and subscribe to my channel as well as uh, press the bell button to get notified with new videos.